This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Trump has called for a crackdown on immigration, telling Congress to cancel the so-called diversity visa program in the wake of the attack in New York City that left eight people dead and at least 11 more injured. I'm going to ask Congress to immediately initiate work to get rid of this program, diversity and diversity lottery. Diversity lottery sounds nice. It's not nice. It's not good. It's not good. It hasn't been good. President Trump's demand came after the suspect, Sefula Saipov, reportedly drove a rented Home Depot truck down a bike path along Manhattan's Hudson River, killing eight people before crashing into a school bus. He then reportedly jumped out of the car, waving a pellet gun and a paintball gun, before being shot by police in the stomach. Authorities say Saipov has been planning the attack for more than a year and chose Halloween. They've gotten this information from his bedside in the hospital. Sapov, an Uzbek native who's lived in Florida, Ohio and Patterson, New Jersey, has now been charged with providing material support to a terrorist organization, as well as violence and destruction of a motor vehicle. On Wednesday, President Trump called for his execution and called him an animal. Many have noted President Trump did not use words like animal to describe the 64-year-old white man Stephen Paddock, who killed 59 people, including himself, in Las Vegas. After that massacre, Trump said it was not time to talk about policy changes on gun control, although he's now calling for immigration policy changes. Trump also did not call for the death penalty after white supremacist James Alex Field killed one woman, Heather Heyer, by also driving his car into a crowd of people protesting a white supremacist rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, in August. Trump did not call James Alex Field an animal, instead saying there was violence on both sides. President Trump suggested Wednesday he would consider sending Sapoff to Guantanamo Bay. I would certainly consider that, yes. I, cons I would certainly consider that. Send him to Gitmo. I would certainly consider that, yes. This would mean sending Sapoff to a military prison, even though he's already been charged with crimes in a U.S. federal court. Sapoff has a green card, which means he's a permanent U.S. resident. On Wednesday, Republican Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham also called for Sapoff to be held as an enemy combatant under the laws of war, denied his Miranda rights and taken to Guantanamo Bay. Meanwhile, Wednesday night, New Yorkers held an interfaith vigil for the victims of Tuesday's attack and left flowers at memorials along the bike path where the rampage occurred. Well, today we spend the hour looking at the attack and the unfolding response to it. We begin here in New York with Shana Cadidal. He's senior managing attorney at the Center for Constitutional Rights. Shana, I want to start off by asking you about Guantanamo, about President Trump's comment that this man, Sapoff, should be sent to Guantanamo. Well, he called him an animal. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we wouldn't be talking about this at all, and, and the president wouldn't be talking about it if uh, if he weren't a Muslim guy with a beard, right? Um, you know, I mean, the, the premise of this is that somehow it's better to try somebody like this at Guantanamo in a military commission than it would be to try them here at home in our ordinary criminal justice system, in our regular federal courts. And that's just absurd on its face. I mean, we know that really the, the we have one of the most draconian criminal justice systems around around in this country. It pulverizes defendants in terrorism cases. It's not fair procedurally, really, significantly, than the commissions. Um, uh, it doesn't result in shorter sentences. Um, and the conditions of confinement after you're convicted are, are typically worse. So, you know, there's no rational reason to try somebody down there rather than up here. Um, you know, and it's just more theatrics from the president. I suppose we've come to expect that. The really maybe troubling thing is that the senior leadership in his own political party, the people we expect better of, McCain and Graham, are are saying the same thing. And, you know, the reason they're saying it is that under Obama for eight years, they were saying this as kind of the pretense for why we needed to keep Guantanamo open at all, that somehow it's a means of making people triable who we can try here at home. Um, well, let's just talk about the significance of Guantanamo. People, it's dropped out of the news. People mm -hmm. not, may not realize even how many men are there. But what happens to people who are tried in U.S. courts? I mean, already charges have been filed um, mm -hmm. against Sapoff. Um, uh, people like Tsarnaev. Didn't he, in this court, 
in a U.S. court get the death penalty, whether people support that or not. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, where you've got a video of somebody actually carrying out the attack, um, you know, the conviction rate is going to be higher even than the 99.2 percent rate that we've got for people who go to trial in the, in the federal system, right? Um, so they get convicted. Um, uh, the sentencing is extremely harsh, because we have sentencing guidelines that, that add a massive enhancement for terrorism crimes. We have mandatory minimums in a lot of different um, uh, cases in the federal system, uh, not necessarily here. Um, but the sentences that are available are very long, whereas in the military commissions, um, a lot of people have gotten off basically with time served after convictions. Um, and then the con con conditions of confinement are horrible um, for terrorism cases. Uh, most people are sent to a place called ADX Florence, uh, where they're kept in some of the, uh, the most harsh solitary confinement um, uh, that's known to man. Um, so, you know, again, um, it's basically putting people through a meat grinder to try them here at home. Uh, and, you know, surely the president, his advice, advisors, McCain and Graham, all know this. So, talk about the number of people who are now at Guantanamo. Uh, and, in fact, if they're at Guantanamo and they go through a military trial, can they get the death penalty? Um, they can, in theory, right? Um, uh, the seven people who are on trial, I, I believe at least six of them are, are on trial for their lives, um, including Abdel Rashim al Nashri, who was on trial for the coal bombing, um, where his entire defense team uh, was just discharged by the chief defense counsel because of uh, really horrendous violations by the government, um, surveillance um, uh, of his defense team, of uh, potentially of his meetings with his own lawyers. Haven't already something like three uh, cases at Guantanamo been overturned? These men are have been held for almost 20 years now, a number mm -hmm. of them without charge. Right. I mean, the vast majority of people there haven't been charged, will never be charged. Um, so there are 10 people who have even been either been convicted or are on trial right now. Um, out of the 41, the rest, um, there are no plans to charge or try, and five of them are cleared for release. And the cost? Um, half a billion dollars a year, um, some $10 million per individual, um, compared to, you know, maybe a couple thousands, um, dozens of thousands for, for holding someone and domestically. And the fact that Sapoff has a green card? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, presents all sorts of other legal hurdles. Um, Non-citizens can theoretically be tried if they fit the alien enemy uh, combatant kind of standard um, in military commissions, but presumably he would have a whole host of constitutional rights um, unambiguously in those trials, um, whereas right now they're fighting over whether whether the non-citizens um, on trial actually have the full panoply of constitutional rights. I want to go from uh, Trump really casting question about the U.S. criminal justice system, so saying that he must be sent to Guantanamo, to what he said about the U.S. not prosecuting terror su su suspects quickly enough, calling the U.S. justice system a laughing stock. This was during a televised White House cabinet meeting on Wednesday. We need quick justice, and we need strong justice, much quicker and much stronger than we have right now. Because what we have right now is a joke, and it's a laughing stock. What we have now is a joke and a laughing stock. Shana Cadido. Yeah. You know, again, I think, uh, you know, a whole host of federal prosecutors would, would disagree with that. Um, uh, you know, again, it's, uh, it's theatrics. Um, uh, you know, it plays into the idea that after the Warren Court's, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of reforms uh, to make the criminal justice system at home even uh, minimally sort of fair, um, uh, to get police coercion and, uh, you know, coerced um, uh, confessions out of the system, that somehow uh, the system has become completely tilted in favor of defendants. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he's, he's playing on a whole host of ideas that circulate in the culture because of cheesy 1970s police dramas and the O.J. Simpson trial. But the actual reality, especially in terrorism cases, is far from that. I'll ask you to stay with us. We're going to break and then come back to look at the diversity lottery program and then the way the media covers um, this attack versus, oh, say, Las Vegas um, uh, versus the killing in Charlottesville. Shana Cadadal, a senior managing attorney at the Center for Constitutional Rights. We'll be back in a minute.